the sermons are on the website if you want to look at them. And Karen, would you pass these up to everybody, please? And uh, so, if you, need, you missed last week's sermon, go check it out. It's the first of the series, and then this week's. And, and I even got some notes for you guys this week, huh? Praise the Lord. So, we have another video. Um, Raji is going to show you um, in just a second here. But I want to talk about the cycle of the Holy Spirit today. We're going to be in Ezekiel chapter 36. So if you'd open up your Bible, iPads, phones, or whatever to that, I'd mean, appreciate it. And if you can turn on this set of lights, it'd be great. This right here. It's on the switch over there. Oh, okay. These right here. Right? Australia. Australia, who uh, was a concert pianist, and she was with us for about eight months, and so she led worship. That was so awesome in time. And so we have some really talented people that come through here. And if you have that type of talent, please see Tina, and we'll work together as a team and, and do worship together. But today, I want to talk to you about a passage that the Lord put on my heart. I taught on the Holy Spirit. I mean, if anybody knows me for any short time, I love to talk about the Holy Spirit, because when Jesus left this earth, he said, I was going to send you, and John to his disciples said, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is going to teach you these wonderful things, it's going to lead you to all truth. Now, how, how many want to know the truth? Amen. Huh? Right? And we, out of our education, out of our knowledge, we try to search for truth, and we do everything we can, and we still don't know, Right? And I feel like standing here today, I don't know enough about the Holy Spirit to even teach you, but I'm going to try today. Is that okay? And I'm going to try to teach you from my heart what uh, uh, another probably aspect of the Holy Spirit that will help you in your daily walk with the Lord. And I believe the Holy Spirit was given to us to reveal truth to us, but also to comfort us. How many need comfort at times? You're distraught, life's problems just overwhelm you, you don't know what to do, you cry out to God finally, and then peace comes. And that peace is like that dove that landed on, this, on Jesus on that day he was baptized by John, and a gentle spirit came upon him, and the heavens opened up, and the Father said, this is my son. Well, I'm well pleased. And Jesus, uh, Father God, today is saying that to you. This is my, you are my daughters and you are my sons and I love you and, and I'm well pleased with you. Amen. I, I was thinking the last night around 11, 30, 12 as we were putting our new puppy to sleep and wrestling with her on the ground trying to get her wore out before she would put her up to bed. I was thinking tomorrow, which is now, I have the privilege again to stand before a group of people and share God's Word. I can't do this without the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And, and you need the Holy Spirit to receive again today what the message is so you can understand how to apply it to your individual lives. Amen? God is pleased with you being here today. Uh, I am privileged again to stand here and share what the Lord has put on my heart for us. And for those that are here for the first time, thank you for coming. For those that are regular attendance, thank you. For those that are not here, we're going to pray God bring them back. Or, 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 or uh, maybe they're going to church somewhere else. But it, it's fine. 
It's not uh, I'm sharing with uh, the guys this morning. I'm honored to uh, have a leadership team that loves God. Amen. Uh, we're a small group, but uh, Hapsipa and Rajiv have been so faithful. Uh, uh, just I'm just honored that they're here. Uh, Dion and Ashley. Ashley's in Oklahoma going to, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, no, where's the church? Life Church. Life Church today, where we've been doing our Bible study, our our, our uh our young couples group is meeting and are using some material from Life Church. It's really awesome uh, on marriage and stuff. And then um, Dion and Ashley and uh, Angel. There's a, right there's Angel. And uh, just so honored that these guys are here. I mean, God's doing something bigger than what you see right now. Can you say amen? Yeah. God's doing much bigger. And as we uh, honor him, and realize that we're part of a bigger body of Christ that is doing some great work for the kingdom of God. God's going to bless us, and He has. So, anyway, praise the Lord. So, let's get started. I want to start off with uh, I'm doing a little research, and you know, I try to use an example, uh, worldly, if you will, a marketing example of what the cycle of the Spirit of God is. And in this, in this um, book called The Power of Habits, you know, how habits form. You do something for a while, and you'll continue as a habit form. You know, so uh, in this book called The Power of Habits, there was, they were talking about a marketing scheme that they did back in the 50s, and so I'm going to show you a little video here in just a second. And part of it is, is the loop of a habit. First, they have to have a cue. Something has to tell you you need something. A cue, they call it. And then there, it becomes a routine, and then there's a reward for that routine. And then that gives you the, the craving to go back and do it again. And so this Pepsi commercial that you're going to see in just a second here is they decided as marketing, they're going to give you a cue. The cue is to have a bright, shiny smile. And back in the 50s, people weren't brushing their teeth as much as they do today. So they started this campaign to get people to brush their teeth. So they had really, these, these cute little commercials to get you to do that. And so first they have to realize that you need to brush your teeth. It's really cool to have white teeth, right? And then they, inside Pepsi, they actually put this chemical called M I M P, which I don't know what that means, but anyway, what they put in it. But it gave you a little tingling feel in your mouth. Now, some of us are old enough to remember that, but anyway, the toothpaste now, they put things in there to make you want to brush your teeth. And you got all the flavors now, and you make it uh, they minty fresh, and all that kind of stuff. But that's the reward of brushing your teeth, is the um, bright, shiny teeth. And then the, the, um, the craving is to want to have that tingly flavor back in your mouth so it comes back to you. So let me let's see this commercial. Can you put, can you... Hey, 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 who's the cute? What's cooking with you? Your teeth look whiter than no, no, no. My teeth aren't new, but my toothpaste is new cups for them. Get with it, kids. New package, new flavor, new Them, 
Then the nations will know that I am the Lord, declared the Sovereign Lord, when I show myself holy through you before their eyes. Verse 24. For I will take you out of the nations, and I will gather you from all the countries and bring you back into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will clean you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I'll put, verse 27, and I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be uh, careful to keep my laws. Let me read verse 27 again. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Father, I just pray this morning for the anointing of your word and the word that I'm going to speak, Lord. I pray that through them only Jesus be glorified. Father, touch your people, soften our hearts to receive what you have to say today. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. So the first thing that we see that the Holy Spirit does is the Holy Spirit purifies. The Holy Spirit purifies. I'm going to put water on you. I'm going to cleanse you. I'm going to purify you. I'm going to make you whole. Amen. Verse 2 says, clean water. You sprinkle clean water. The water represents what? And now that we know that this is the Old Testament story, talk about the water. But what do we know what happens that cleanses in the New Testament? It's only the blood of Jesus. Amen. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from our sin. Amen. And it also, listen to this very carefully. If you don't remember anything today, remember this. It cleanses us from our guilt. And the church and the religious people want to add guilt to our relationship with God. And God says there's no guilt. When you come and feel guilty sometimes, come on, we all do. The enemy uses that. We're not good enough. We made a mistake. It's, he brings it up in our face. Look at you. You know, you know, look what you did or look at your attitude. Look what you said or how you reacted. And the guilt of our past, the enemy brings up all the time, does he not? Look what you did back there and that's why you're so messed up. But listen, I want to tell you today... God loves you, He cares about you, and your past is your past, and the only one that brings it up is the devil, the enemy of God, and your enemy. Amen? And it says if you love the world more than you love God, then the enemy of God is your lover, so you got to change that maybe a little bit if you, if you want to look at your relationship with God, but that's not what God's saying. He's saying there's no guilt because my blood has cleansed you of your sins, and I'll remember them no more. Now, he says, I'm going to add to you this heart change, maybe. I want to take this heart that's been so hard by the things of this world, and I'm going to soften it so my Holy Spirit can mold you into what, the image of Christ. That's what's happening. Amen. And the reason I want to come down here today is because I want to know that I'm going through the same process that you are. God's changing me. Amen. And he's changing my heart and making me softer towards the things of God. So I can hear the voice of God and do the things of God. Amen. How many want to hear from God, the creator of the world, who loves you and, you know, spoke in existence the very stars that we see every day. Yes. Knows everything about your life and wants you to have peace. Hallelujah. He's a great God. Amen? Yeah. The primary purpose of the Holy Spirit is to help purify us into the image of Christ. First, it's conviction of salvation. And then, as I'm going to use a big word here, I know it's not, not really big, but I'm going to use a word that sounds real religious. We call that salvation, right? When you get saved, you give your life to Jesus. You're now saved, God. The Holy Spirit convicted you. But as you, after that moment, when you bow your knee and your heart, you say, I surrender, God. I know I need you. I recognize that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Whatever you did that moment when you gave your heart to Jesus, every one of us has a story. Or hopefully every one of us has a story. But then as you walk as a believer, there's another word that comes into play. It's called sanctification. I call it progressive sanctification because something that's happening all the time. Do you ever realize you're doing something and you get that little nudge from the Holy Spirit that says, uh-uh. I don't know how he does it to you, but it's like, you're not supposed to say that or you're not supposed to be like that. That's a bad attitude. You're going, 
oh Lord, the first thing you say, I don't know how you do it, but the first thing I say is, oh Lord, forgive me. I didn't realize that was a bad thing, or maybe I just wasn't aware of it. And the Spirit of God, by His gentleness, says, you shouldn't do that. It's called sanctification. It's as we grow in the Lord, He purifies us. The word sanctification means uh, separation, uh, to make holy. The children of Israel were separated as a children, as a nation, to be holy in the eyes of the rest of the world. And God wants us as his children to be the same way, separated from the things of the world, made holy in his sight. You say, holy now, now, pastor, you're putting a, a sanctified, get rid of stuff, and now am I going to be holy? Yes, because that's what God looks at you as his children. No longer we're not part of the other nations, we're part of, we're joint heirs with Christ. We're grafted into the vine, if you will, in John, and we're part of the children of God now, because we say yes to Jesus. So we work towards this thing. The Holy Spirit helps us to be sanctified. Now, uh, turn to your neighbor and say, yes, I'm working on it. <laughs> or let's say, Lord, purify me. Because that's what he's doing. He's taking the things that are of this world, the things that are not of his nature, and he's taking them slowly out of our out of our, our nature, our character. And how many know our character is like the hardest thing to change? Did you, God knows that too. Amen. And God wants us to be little Jesuses in the world. Why? Why does God put so much effort and why did he send the Holy Spirit? Why did he give that to you and me to walk in this world? Because he wants to see other people saved. He wants to see other people with the freedom that we have in God. He wants to see people with joy unspeakable and full of glory. He wants to see them walk in the Spirit of God and lead them out of unrighteousness into righteousness. Amen? And you know what's so cool about all this? That God wants you to do that. Amen? That's our responsibility. The Holy Spirit, I was thinking about this. Why did God choose man to proclaim his gospel? You ever think about that? I mean, the creator of the world, all these angels, I mean, an angel could appear here, uh, you know, eight foot tall angel. Jesus Christ is the son of God. Believe in him and you'll have eternal life. I mean, wouldn't you just like freak out and just like bow your heart to him? Amen. That would be really cool. But no, he chose us. Why? Because he redeemed us. And changed us into the image of Christ. So we are responsible to proclaim what God did for us. That's how the gospel is. It's really simple, isn't it? Tell people what God did for you and tell them he can do it for them. God loves you. He died for you. And he can forgive you. Could you imagine the load? Remember the time when you said yes to Jesus? The load of burden of sin and guilt came off of you. And that's what he wants to do for the rest of the world. Amen? Uh, John, let's turn to uh, John 16, 13. Should we be ready? 
all the time. Amen? The Spirit knows. We should be ready. Amen? And the Spirit of God's going to, what's yet to come in your life? I mean, that's how, the Bible is really general when it comes to things, but it's very specific to our individual needs and life. Amen? And He's going to tell you what's yet to come. Fear not, for the Lord is with you. Isn't that good? Yeah. Don't worry about the future because the future has its problems of its own. So just take care of today. And I tell you what, today I'll give you food, a place to live, I'll give you clothes on your back. I'll take care of you. Amen? Just trust in me. How many can do that? That's hard. That's, how about lifting that burden off of you? But that's what the Spirit of God does. Amen? But our hearts need to change towards God for that. And James writes about this. Let's go to James. How sometimes we um, grieve the Spirit of God and we don't allow the Spirit of God to touch our hearts. In James chapter 4, verse 2, I'll let you get there. It's on page 1132 in my Bible. James chapter 4, verse 2. And we're going to go to verse 5. This, and, it, verse, and I don't want to just like skip this, but this verse, I don't want to take it out of context, so let me read verse 1, 2. It says, what causes fights and quarrels among you? He's talking about the church now, us, the believers. Don't uh, they come from your desires that battle within you, that battle within you? You want something, but don't get it. You kill and covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You have, uh, you do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. That sometimes we don't get answered to our prayers because we're just asking God, I want, I want. And God might be saying, give, give, give instead. So you might have to check that out a little bit. That you may spend what you get on your pleasure. So what we're doing is we're asking God for stuff and it's all about us. And you know what? Since Jesus came on earth, it's all about doing for others. That's the character that changes when we get out of materialism and get into a crisisism, if you will. I'm going to use that as a term. I don't know if it's a, legal, a good word, but, you know, get into Christ's motives and what Christ wants. We stop thinking about our pleasures, what's for us, and start thinking about others. Isn't that a great thing when you help somebody? You know, this morning as we're, in, you know, after I was, you know, preparing for the sermon this morning, we're leaving our driveway, and my neighbor uh, gets a newspaper. They throw, it, they throw it out in the driveway every morning. And so every morning I watch him, and he, he's, he can't bend over, so he kicks the paper up to his uh, walk by his uh, steps, and then he bends over and picks it up and takes it in the house. And I'm just saying this for because I just don't, God does all these little things, and he, it's just a little thing that we did today. So as I was driving on the driveway, I told Tina, I said, why don't you get out of the car and take that, his paper up to the house? And just set it out on the porch for him so he doesn't have to bend over and kick it up the driveway, right? It's not a lot, but just like the Spirit works like that. Just sometimes small things. Helping other people, not thinking of yourself. It's amazing how it changes your character, how it changes your heart. It softens us because you're doing something that the Spirit of God wants you to do. And, you know, there's, the reward may be nothing. You might just think, wow, that was really cool when he gets out there, you know? But eventually he'll figure it out. But it's not important. The, my, my motive for that would be to share Jesus with them. Right? My motive for it is that he would come to a full relationship of understanding God, but not for something of my own reward. That's what I'm trying to say here. Verse 4, you're adulterous people. You don't know that friendship with the world is hatred towards God. Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Okay. So, read that again. Anybody that loves the world is an enemy of God. Is this the Bible or not? Is it, I could just, oh, that, that doesn't really, that's not for today. That was James writing that for the, 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 the believers back in 2,000 years ago. But you know what? The Bible is like really hard, isn't it? It like tells you the way you're supposed to do things. And it's okay. Don't be guilty about it. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. But listen, this is the word of God. We want to have the fullness of God in our life. We want to have our hearts to be softened to him. Look, these are the things that we need to examine and just say, you know, take it. I don't know about you, but I read this sometimes. I just take it literally. I'm like, okay, God, am I really a friend of the world? Am I really am my priorities here on earth more than they are in heaven? Am I looking for a greater thing? To come, a greater reward, which would be with God forever and ever? 
Or am I just going to have temporal pleasures in this world just to satisfy my needs now? I mean, I love to do things, but I mean, come on, let's be real. All right, sorry about that. Small commercial break. Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or, verse 5, do you think Scripture says without reason that the Spirit has caused to live in us envy, envy, envy intensity, but envies intensely, but He gives us more grace? That is why the Scripture says God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. That, so the Spirit of God within us envies because He knows there's more for us. Amen? He knows there's more for us than just the pleasures of this world. That's what it's saying here. There's more. God has more for you than just these temporal things that the world can offer. But God, I got like electric bill. I got uh, car payment. I got all this stuff I need. I need to take care of my kids. I got the clothes. I got, yeah, yeah, God knows all that. And he'll help you with that. Amen. I talked with Pastor Jorge last night, you know, and Pastor, uh, he's pastoring full-time and working, and last year he had hardly any work at all, and so we prayed and said, God, would you just bless Pastor Jorge with finances so he could not worry about his own personal needs, so he could pastor the church, amen? I mean, that's, that's you know, because he's, he's a great man of God, and pray for Pastor Jorge and the Spanish church that meet here. And so God has given him so much that he's even canceled his trip to Honduras so he could finish his job working at uh, one of the hotels, offering him uh, 36 rooms of paint. Amen? I mean, that is pretty cool. He has not been without finances here because we believe God can give him what he needs. Amen? So he can pass through the church without worrying about his personal needs. And that's what the motivation was. It wasn't about getting stuff, a new car, a new house, none of that stuff. It was about, can he do the work of the ministry without worrying about those basic needs? And praise God, this whole year, he's been uh, uh, abundantly supplied with work and actually had to hire people to do jobs so he wouldn't have to do it. So praise God for that, amen? God knows his heart. His heart's been softened towards the things of God. And so he, all his desire is to see his people grow in a relationship with God. And the same thing here. So the Holy Spirit's responsibility, first and foremost, if you look at your notes, it says, to purify us, amen? To purify us, to make us holy, to separate us for his glory, amen? Come on, shut me down when I'm preaching good. You know this is good stuff, amen? Hallelujah. It says, um, the, the Spirit feels you, let's see, he envy, he's envious towards you, I got that, I'm sorry, uh, cleanse my heart. I was uh, thinking about, uh, I got a story, can I tell a story on us? Now, we were, when we first got married, uh, I didn't share this with Tina, so I, I might have to get, uh, anyway, when we first got married, you know, we didn't have a dishwasher, and uh, so we did all our washing by hand, and I, I tell people romance starts in the kitchen. You know, the wife washes the dishes, the husband dries the dishes. And, you know, uh, I'll teach you about that later. Uh, but it's just a great time of uh, uh, romance, doing dishes together. And so when we didn't have a dishwasher, we did dishes. And then we got our first apartment with our first dishwasher. And we still kind of did dishes by hand because we're so used to it. But eventually we put the dishes in the dishwasher and, and then it was, it was clean. Then it was the, the task of unloading the dishwasher. Right? It's like the dishes just sit in the dishwasher, you know. And we still today, they sit in the dishwasher until somebody does the dishes. But I just wanted to, I thought, when I thought of that, I was like, you know, we, we want to give all our situations to the Lord. But you know the Lord wants us to unload And unload all our stuff to him. Amen. Unload it to him. So we can purify us and make us clean. Amen. Today some of us got a load and we need to open the door, pull out the drawers, and give it over to the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> Purify our desires, Lord, so we can be like you. So the Holy Spirit, let's look at verse 27, Ezekiel, uh, back to Ezekiel. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and, and be careful to keep my laws. So God's going to put his spirit in you so you can 
be obedient to him. That's one of the things that is really difficult is being obedient to what the Spirit of God says. In Acts chapter 11, we see Peter. Remember, Peter was in a, saw, it was in a uh, uh, upstairs. He was praying. He says he was in a trance, if you will. And he saw a vision. And in the vision, these, there was this four, this big cloth that came down from heaven. And in that cloth was all these unclean animals. And the Lord told him to kill and eat. And he said to the Lord, no, I can't. Any, no unclean thing has ever entered my mouth, right? And everybody translates that, that we can't eat. We can now eat unclean animals. We can eat pork, we can eat shrimp, whatever. Everybody's got these dietary things that they argue about because of scripture. Uh, that's not what this vision was about, was it? Then all of a sudden, in another town, Joppa, right? These men come and they knock on the door right at that point, and the Holy Spirit says to Peter, Go with those men. So Peter had a vision, and then the Spirit of God spoke to him. He was obedient to the Spirit of God, and there he went to the Gentiles for the first time and shared with them about Jesus. Do you remember what happened? And they received the Holy Spirit just like they did in Jerusalem. And they began to speak in tongues. They began to prophesy. Amen. And so the Spirit of God moved like that. They had a vision. How many want vision? How many people have visions today? It says in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your young people will see what? Visions. And your old man, like some of like Lewis, will dream dreams. Amen. <laughs> So we have dreams and vision. When did those dreams and vision happen in the, in the new modern age? It happened in, after the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit of God came. So people do have vision. Peter had a vision. Did people have visions in the Old Testament? Yes. Ezekiel yes. had a vision. Right? If you go to verse chapter 37, you see the, the Spirit led Ezekiel to what? Some dry bones representing the children of Israel. Speak to those bones. And he spoke to those bones, and what happened? Ligaments and skin and flesh came on those bones, and they raised up, right? Same thing with here. Here, Peter had a vision. God was giving him a vision. And the Spirit moved him to do something. And what did Peter do? He was obedient. To the, what did Peter say? Hey, I haven't had lunch yet. I'm a little busy. I, I didn't get my nap. I had his vision, but I didn't get a chance to have my nap. That's why I went upstairs to do that, to take a nap. No, Peter was obedient instantly. And what happened, the reward was amazing. He went and shared Jesus with somebody, or uh, with a group, and they got, all got saved, and they all believed, and they all got filled with the Holy Spirit, and that helped start the gospel spread to the Gentiles. Amen? Now, fast forward, if you will, up to uh, a, a different way. Now, that's the way the Spirit worked that way. Now look at, at, at uh, Paul. Paul had a vision. Remember the Macedonian call? Peter had, uh, Paul had a vision, right? Let's turn there. Let's turn to that in um, Acts chapter 16. I want to show you something really kind of cool. Because the Holy Spirit doesn't work the same way in everybody, but he does move in, in to see the gospel of Jesus glorified. Amen. Paul's companions traveled throughout Persia uh, and Galatia, then having them kept by the Holy Spirit, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. See what it says right there? Verse, uh, chapter 16, verse 6. The second part of verse 6 says, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. So here we see, the whole, in Peter's case, we see the Holy Spirit compelling him. First he had a vision. The Holy Spirit uh, moved on some people to come to Joppa. They, they knocked on the door. Peter heard them. The Holy Spirit said to him, go with them. Peter instantly went with them. Now here in verse 16, where Paul, we know apostle to the Gentiles, was kept from going to Asia preaching the gospel. Now isn't that weird? The Holy Spirit moves in different ways in different times. But then, Pete, then if you look down just a little further, then Paul, it says in verse 9, during the night Paul had a vision of a man in Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. 
After Paul had seen the vision, we get ready. We got ready at once, left for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So what happens first? Is it, is it a vision comes first and then pre, then the Holy Spirit moves? Or is the Holy Spirit say something and then you have a vision and you go? Isn't it cool that God does, works both ways? So when somebody says, I can't have a doctor says, okay, it has to be this way. God doesn't work in a box. The Holy Spirit is going to move and all he wants you and I to do is the obedience. He prompts us to do something and then we do it. Amen? Sometimes we don't do it right away. Can I, I'm going to use Amy. I owe her $5. I'm going to use Amy as an example. Amy and Jesus, uh, last week, there was a lady by their apartment complex with a little child. And this lady was there in the morning when she went to work, and then in the evening she was still there. And I'm, I don't know all the details, but Amy, by the prompting of the Holy Spirit, said, you need to help that lady. And not really sure about that, she called us. She called Tina. What do you think I should do? Of course, I answered Tina's phone. So you know what I, you know, spiritual application time. That's what dads do. What do you think God's telling you to do? Well, I think I should help her. Okay, didn't do that. Right? So they, she met her, met her child. We got her, they put her, they bought her some groceries. They put her in a hotel for the night. And then we even got some information for her to try to get temporary housing. I don't even know what's happened to her now. I'm just praying to God that she gets what she needs. But it's just a prompting. It's like you're not really sure that, um, you know, should I or shouldn't do something, right? It's just like I said about prophecy in the beginning. 10% of the time is probably not right. But 90% of the time is probably the Holy Spirit telling you to do something. You know, I tell Tina not to do this, but you know, sometimes you say, well, I should stop and help that person. Right? And today, you know, in society, it's kind of, you've got to be careful. We've got to really know what the Spirit of God's telling you. So that's my caution as a dad and a husband. But, you know, really, the Holy Spirit prompts you to do stuff sometimes. Buy the person's groceries in front of you. But I don't know how much it's going to be. Well, it doesn't matter. If the Holy Spirit tells you to do it, you're going to have enough money. Have you ever done that? They freak out. It's a fun thing to do in the middle of a grocery store because nobody's kind in the grocery store. Buy somebody's groceries or, 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 or just help your neighbor or go say hi to somebody or bake a cake. I remember baking up, uh, getting a pie after one of our friends with an extra pie left over, an apple pie. Our neighbor, the neighbor that we, uh, Tina, helped with the newspaper this morning, his wife had passed away uh, uh, a couple years ago. But before she passed away, she was, she was one of those grumpy neighbors. You ever have one? The kids would just go over on their lawn, even though they're renters, they shoot yell at the, my kids. I'm like, I get really angry, but then I'm like, She's just being herself. She doesn't know how to be kind. So I had that, we had that extra pie, and I said, I said, apple pie was her favorite. I don't know how I found that out, but over the years I found it out. And so I took her a pie. And she, I knocked on her door and I said, hey, I got a pie, apple pie for you. And she goes, what is this, a peace offering? I said, no, I just want to tell you we love you and we care about you, you know? And it was just the greatest moment. It changed her. Because she stopped yelling at the kids. Every once in a while she would, but you know, I mean, I knew God was softening her heart because of an act of kindness. Amen? I think God wants us to do that. He prompts us. Sometimes it's the vision. You get have a dream and go, wow, what was that all about? If you don't know, come and we'll help you interpret it. Amen? We like doing that. Sometimes the Spirit just nudges you, if you will, to do something. I'm telling you that there's a great reward of knowing that the God of this universe sends His Holy Spirit to help you do something for Him. It's just, I don't know how I can explain it, the joy that fills my heart. I like feel like the little kids skipping through the house like, hey, God use me. I just feel excited about that. I want Him to do that. I want to do that more for you, man. And that's how the Holy Spirit prompts you and me to be you. So there's a cycle, right? And then it produces something in us that is so amazing. The love of God flows through us in the way that He wants it to happen. Amen? It's a natural thing that God has put in us. So you, you're purified when you become saved. You're sanctified as we walk with God and His Holy Spirit. Amen? He separates us. Makes us who would help somebody? A woman on the corner street with her little kid. Well, not thousands of people drove past that woman. Until so somebody had a heart after God and God said prompted her to go help. 
Amen? That's not natural. We're so selfish. We do everything for ourselves, but the Holy Spirit wants us to be uh, supernatural. Mm -hmm. Amen? Not out of our own reasoning, but out of God's love that we have compassion for people. It's not natural. We're just selfish by nature. Think of baby. I want, I want, I want. Give me, give me, give me. Cry about everything, right? And how did they get that? That's just, God, that's that sin nature. That's part of who they are. That's, but we have to change. And when we say that yes to Jesus, and the Bible says that we're born again, we change our spirit, is born into God's spirit. Now we're, we're attuned to the spirit of God. And all of a sudden we continue to walk in him and learn and grow. And we're always learning and we're always growing. I think we never reach perfection. That's okay. If you realize that's where you're at in God. He wants to change you in his image. Oh, I would pray. Lord, just say it with me. Lord, change me into your image. Change me into your image, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, and I this, let me just sum this up with this. Tina, would you come and play? I want to pray for you guys today. Uh, uh, we have done something new at Capital City Church over the last month or so. Uh, the New and, and, and not um, wild, crazy new, but just something that I think God wants us to do here for this church, for whoever shows up on Sunday morning. We want to pray for you. Now, I want to pray for you in response to the sermon. You know, hey, maybe I'm not here where I'm supposed to be here. God changed me. Maybe I need to listen or prompting the Holy Spirit a little bit more so I can produce the love that God wants to produce in my life. Because what happens, if you look at that word, that circle, the second circle has desire in there. What happens is our desire begins to change. We want to go back to purity. We want to go back to holiness. We want to go back to those places where we know God wants us to be so we can produce the love and the compassion that comes with God. But without that, so let me just read this. This is what I believe to take the guilt out of this whole sermon, okay? Um, and then I want to pray for you guys at one prayer. I want to pray for the response to this, but I also want to pray for whatever need you have. If you have, uh, I know you guys are looking at a home. We're going to pray for that today, okay? We want to pray that God gives you favor with that whole situation. And, and whatever else you have need today, health issues, uh, financial issues, uh, issues with your parents, I don't know. God says we should love our mom and dad. I don't care how old you are. If you have trouble with that, we want to pray for that. But whatever you have need today, amen, we want to do that. And then Dion's going to help me pray. And, and uh, Angel, would you come and help me pray today for those that have needs today? And then I, then I want to... Um, and then at the end, uh, uh, Dion's going to come and he's going to speak a little bit about uh, the offering and, and give you a chance to give this morning to, to the Lord's work here. Uh, so I want to thank you in advance for that. But let me read this statement. I think it's really important. It puts everything together today. Uh, I believe God put this in my heart. I, I actually got this from another pastor, so it's not my work, but you know, I know God's work is greater than my, myself. So, it's, we do all this not to, so that we, not so that the pleasures in your life will die. We don't do this so all the pleasures in your life will die. But we do this so the righteousness in your life will live. Let me say that again. We, we do all this not that the pleasures will die in our life. We always look at what we have to give up, right? That's not the point. If you love doing things, if you're, you're, you like to fish, fish. You know, do, do your thing. If you're a, a computer guy, do your computer stuff. Have, do to your best. Amen? Do the things that you like to do. God will use all that you are for his glory if you let him. Amen? It's not about that. It's not that the pleasure will die in your life. It's really about the righteousness of God will come out of you and grow out of you. And then you can use all that you are for the kingdom of God. All your talents, all your skills, who you are, God made you that way. So that His Son can be glorified in your life and the world around you. Amen? So let's stand together. We're just going to sing the song, I Surrender. Tina, this leads to that. And then we're going to...